What's good everybody, Hip Hop List Daily here with a brand new video. Today I got something special for you, not like the everyday US gangs that I post on my channel. Especially the US Crips, which I thought we can only find them in the United States. I recently found out that some Crip gangs spread around the world too in countries such as Netherlands. Netherlands? Yeah. In the heart of the Netherlands urban landscape lies a mysterious and enigmatic presence, the Crips. Today, we embark on a journey to unravel the complexities of this underground phenomenon. From the vibrant street art that adorns the Amsterdam walls to the unspoken rules governing the streets of Hague, Dutch Crips have carved their niche in the tapestry of urban culture. But the question number one is, are they authentic? Like they have roots to the original Crips? Or they are just posers? Join me as I navigate through the very heart of this urban enigma shedding light on their origins, their impact, and the intricate web of connections that bind them. In the late 80s, a report from the municipality of Amsterdam leaked to Het Parool, asserting that large Moroccan youth gangs were causing trouble in Amsterdam's red light district. Crips groups may be known to the public through recent reports, including those in magazines like Nuva Revue, the text is often accompanied by photos of dark-skinned young men in blue outfits, with a stern look in their eyes and a firearm in hand. Many Dutch individuals often find themselves inadvertently conflating these entities with football ultras, a widely celebrated phenomenon throughout Europe. But that was not the case. This is a group with an identity, and its uniqueness lies, among other things, in the collective symbols that its members use. At that juncture, law enforcement turned its attention towards these youth groups, on April 23, 1997, a meeting took place at the Ministry of Justice involving individuals with diverse backgrounds, including the police, public prosecution, academia, and policy. The discussion revolved around the question of what research should, could be conducted on criminal youth groups in the Netherlands. During this occasion, it was mentioned that in The Hague in 1993, two youth groups were operating, perceived by individuals from the police and judiciary as youth gangs, Black gangs on the American West Coast, specifically those in Los Angeles, call themselves Crips. In the Netherlands, these gangs gained notoriety through reports on gang wars between the Crips and their arch rivals, the Bloods. The three groups in this study are Crips groups, inspired by the American Crips. The Eight Trey Crips. While the Eight Trey Gangster Crips are a huge gang located in South Central Los Angeles, we can find a chapter two in Netherlands so, like I said in the intro, are they for real? I mean, did somebody from Los Angeles 8 trays migrated to Netherlands? Or they just started to claim that? In mid-September 1993, a boy is arrested. He, along with two others, robbed a Moroccan boy of a gold chain and tried to escape. The victim, accompanied by his friend's father, immediately sets out in a car to find the perpetrators. They spot the first individual walking on the street, he attempts to flee but is cornered, prompting a pursuit with a scooter. Eventually, he is apprehended by two coincidentally passing police officers. Following his statement and that of the Moroccan boy, the two accomplices are initially arrested. Later, the other gang members are arrested one by one. These were one of the first offenses that eight Trey Crips committed. In the year 1993, specifically earlier in that same year, a cohort of young individuals residing in the Spoorweg district of The Hague made the collective decision to establish a group, drawing inspiration from the existing Crip gangs in the Hague vicinity. During this pivotal period, the group garnered endorsement from a senior member of the Crip organization belonging to another gang. Consequently, from that point onward, the collective adopted the moniker, the Eight Trey Crips, marking the initiation of their presence within the community. Unfortunately, the Eight Trey Crips of Netherlands are not original. They are a gang inspired from an old DVD of Los Angeles Gang, which contains footage with a known 8 Trey gangster OG, Monster Cody. However, the 8 Trays of Netherland were active back in the day. It's around summer of 1994. In one of The Hague's vibrant nightclubs, a bustling gathering of youths immerse themselves in the pursuit of revelry and entertainment. However, amid the energetic crowd, a presence loomed large, the 8 Trey Crips. This particular evening took an unforeseen turn when members of this group discerned the presence of rival gang members situated across the expanse of the bar. The atmosphere swiftly shifted from celebratory to tense as the eight Trey Crips, motivated by a determination to establish their dominance, escalated the situation into violence. 
Their unwavering resolve to show no mercy and to earn commendations within their ranks fueled the intensity of the confrontation, transforming the once lively venue into a battleground of conflicting allegiances. This abrupt eruption of discord underscored the complexities and dynamics that often characterize the interactions among youth groups within urban settings. Eastside Crips Also around 1993, a woman is assaulted on the street. She approached a group of boys and demanded a tracksuit jacket belonging to her daughter from one of them. Words were exchanged, and the woman pushed one of the boys. In response, she was punched and kicked by several boys. The woman files a report of assault, and additionally, she reports that her daughter has been repeatedly robbed by the boys. Other reports are filed, but it is not an easy process. Some individuals provide statements, but later choose to withdraw them. The gang not only steals from its victims, but also instills great fear in them. Established at the conclusion of 1992, the East Side Crips, boasting a seniority beyond their counterparts in the previous gang, have cultivated a lasting presence within their community. In contrast to the eight Trey Crips, the East Side faction exhibits a heightened level of sophistication and evolution in their gang identity. Distinguishing themselves further, the East Side Crips have chosen to adopt black as their secondary color, a symbolic manifestation of their distinct ethos and organizational character. Moreover, displaying a keen sense of collective identity, the East Side Crips have meticulously selected their gang hat, opting for the Georgetown Hoyas hat, which they proudly wear alongside black bandanas. This strategic approach to symbolic representation not only reflects the group's evolution, but also underscores their commitment to a unique and cohesive identity within the broader context of gang culture. The adoption of specific colors and attire serves as a visual testament to the East Side Crips' organizational intricacies and their conscious effort to establish a distinct presence within the urban landscape. The formation of the gang is mentioned to have been triggered by one of the boys having a dispute with a group of skinheads that was roaming the streets of Hague back in the day. Therefore, it is said, we are a club to defend ourselves against skinheads. Just like in the files of the eight Trey Crips, mention is also made here of other existing gangs in the Hague. Answering whether they commit criminal acts as members of a gang is much more challenging than with the first gang in The Hague. There seems to be no evidence of planning, and none of the gang members mention an obligation to prove themselves. However, it is said that someone wanting to join the group must fight. They are beaten up by three members. This test is only for boys from outside the neighborhood and does not apply to young boys. Southside First Tray Crips also in the 90s, but in a different city of Netherlands, in Rotterdam, more than 20 violent thefts and robberies occur around its streets. On the streets, boys are forced to surrender their scooters under threat, and shopkeepers are deprived of the cash register contents. In the earliest crimes, threats are made with a knife, but soon they escalate to using firearms for this purpose, which is a huge evolution compared to the Hague's Crips. Because all these offenses take place on or in the vicinity of the same shopping boulevard in the Hillas Louis district, it is logical to link them together. Due to the short time span and the violent nature of the crimes, local shopkeepers are deeply alarmed. Local newspapers describe the situation as terror, and the police treat the matter with great seriousness. The South First Trey Crips are the authors of these crimes. The exact moment when the boys started calling themselves Crips is not evident from the court records. References to the gang are scarce, and the cohesion between the members is rarely discussed. Graffiti originating from the Crips has been found in various locations in the neighborhoods of Rotterdam, which turned the city to a gang epidemic. It can be deduced from more than just the groceries. Their tags, the captions they use, such as SSFTC, provide evidence. Unlike the East Side Crips, to join the South Side First Tray Crips, you need to do a robbery. Several times, attention is drawn to the fact that boys belonging to the First Tray Crips groups are considered firearm dangerous, according to police records. In one case, a conductor is threatened with a large model firearm, and at another time, there is mention of acquiring an Uzi. Upon a comprehensive analysis of the provided information, a discernible pattern emerges, shedding light on the interconnected network between the Rotterdam boys and various gangs situated in The Hague. Notably, the first Trey Crips stand out as a foundational entity Recognized as the oldest Crip gang within the broader context of these affiliations, it is crucial to underscore the pivotal role played by the first Trey Crips in the genesis of Crip gangs in The Hague. Their influence extends beyond mere existence, 
as this venerable group actively contributed to the establishment of subsequent Crip affiliations in the region. An instrumental figure in this propagation of Crip ideology is a member widely acknowledged as 90C, who assumed the responsibility of disseminating the Crip ethos throughout the Netherlands. This interconnected web of affiliations and the dissemination of the Crip philosophy underscores the dynamic nature of gang culture, transcending geographic boundaries and fostering collaborative ties between disparate factions. The historical alliance between the Rotterdam Boys and the Hague Gangs, spearheaded by the influential First Trey Crips and catalyzed by dedicated members like 90C, serves as a testament to the intricate and evolving dynamics within the realm of urban subcultures. I was really shocked when I found about this, but Netherlands was like the California of Europe back in the day. A couple of blood graffitis were found around Rotterdam also. Plus, by the course of the years, a lot of Crip gangs were founded, such as Underground Murder Crips or Main Triad Crips, which, believe it or not, the Main Triad Crips are claiming neighborhood Crips. Insane. Now we are heading to another Crip gang of Netherlands, also located in Hague. This gang made national headlines. In the 1970s, four brothers and their family left Suriname for the Netherlands, marking a significant cultural and socio-economic transition. The brothers grappled with assimilation challenges against the backdrop of the dynamic 1970s Dutch society. Their story, part of the Surinamese diaspora, encapsulates the broader immigrant experience, exploring themes of identity and belonging. In the 80s, under Raymond's leadership, one of the brothers with early gang knowledge, the siblings adopted the name The Eagles. This marked a shift from their immigrant journey to a united gang in the Dutch underworld. The choice of the Eagles reflects strength and unity. Raymond's leadership adds complexity to their story, raising questions about their motivations within the organized crime landscape of 1980s Netherlands. Influenced by the American hood lifestyle, the Eagles crew underwent a significant transformation, expanding into the breakdance scene as Call Us Cool. This shift reflected not only their artistic prowess, but also a desire for diverse expression within the subculture. However, as they ventured into high school parties, their presence became synonymous with violent confrontations, overshadowing their creative pursuits. The contrast between their breakdancing artistry and the turbulence of these events adds complexity to their narrative. Exploring the reasons behind this shift reveals a tale of contradictions and internal struggles prompting an examination of societal pressures and rivalries that influenced their trajectory. In essence, the journey from the Eagles to Call Us Cool unveils a story of adaptation, artistic expression, and the challenges within the intricate dynamics of their evolving identity. As time progressed, the small-time gangsters who laid the foundation for Call Us Cool found themselves gradually maturing and delving deeper into the world of crime. This transition marked a crucial moment as the crew shifted from being solely a breakdance crew to assuming the guise of a full-fledged street gang. With this evolution came a significant rebranding. The crew opted to alter their identity once more, this time adopting the moniker Crazy Underground Criminals. This new name not only reflected their burgeoning involvement in illicit activities, but also signified a bold declaration of their status within the underground realm. The transformation from a group of dancers to a formidable street gang underscores the complexities of their journey and the shifting dynamics within their social sphere. The name change to Crazy Underground Criminals not only captured the attention of their peers, but also solidified their reputation as players in the shadowy underworld of crime. The young members of CUC were captivated by the emerging global hip-hop culture in the late 1980s, shaping the foundation of their group identity in the origin story of CUC, the pivotal shift from crazy underground criminals to criminal underground crips can be traced back to the influential impact of the film Colors. In 1988, including Raymond, several CUC members watched the movie in a Hague theater. Raymond, deeply affected by the film, took it to the streets of The Hague, turning them into an open-air cinema. This cinematic outreach marked a transformative moment, leading Call Us Cool to become crazy underground crips. The fusion of local street culture with global hip-hop, epitomized by colors, underscores CUC's dynamic evolution, highlighting the influence of cultural forces in shaping urban youth identities. This journey, driven by cinematic inspiration, weaves together individual experiences, collective identity, and the broader currents of cultural change. 
leaving an indelible mark on the urban landscape of The Hague. Claiming Crip and appropriating parts of the characteristic Crip gang style, most notably the famous Blue Rags, initially started out as a joke on the streets of The Hague, but quickly grew into a statement, providing CUC with an additional attractive layer for their group identity. An incident on April 2, 1989, marks a defining moment in the development of the Dutch Crips as a gang. After a fight had broken out during a rap performance by members of CUC earlier that day, a second fight in a club in the center of The Hague escalated. This brawl resulted in a lethal stabbing committed by the younger brother of Raymond. Since then, the crazy undergrounds started to prove themselves more and more. What followed was what Raymond described as one of the defining moments in Dutch gangster history. Helicopter hijacking. The idea was to hijack a helicopter to help a man escape from prison in Scheveningen. Although several members of CUC practiced extensively with ropes and ladders in the local youth center, the attempt failed. Tarek, the CUC member who hijacked the helicopter, forced the pilot to land the helicopter in the nearby city of Zodermeer and fled the scene. An insurance card in the bag Tarek left behind in the helicopter eventually led to his arrest. Four people were arrested and sentenced for hijacking the helicopter. Raymond was sentenced to four years in prison for masterminding the breakout. Tarek, who hijacked the aircraft, also received four years. In prison, Raymond promoted Crippen to the fullest. In addition to popularizing the Crips brand in the Netherlands, he also met several future members of the Dutch Crips while serving his sentence. With Raymond incarcerated, there were no members who could fulfill his leadership role and CUC became less active on the streets. Back in The Hague in 1997, Raymond reinvigorated CUC with his prison experiences and new network ties. With Raymond back in charge, they resumed their criminal activities, specializing in very violent jacks, which resulted in several victims, also on the side of CUC. In 1997, a transformative year marked the emergence of a new generation of Crips in the Netherlands. Raymond's release from prison signified a turning point, leading to significant changes in gang politics and nomenclature. The once known crazy underground Crips ceased to exist, making way for the rise of the main triad Crips, now dominating the streets of The Hague. The name Main pays homage to the gang's local surroundings, specifically referencing the long and busy road bordering their turf. Triad reflects Raymond's inspiration from his prison reading about the close-knit nature and organizational structure of the Chinese triads. Embedded in the subcultural ethos of Dutch Crips is the belief that gang membership is a lifelong commitment. Over the passing years, the main triad Crips have not only expanded, but also forged connections, both locally and internationally. Utilizing the internet, gang leader Raymond established ties with original Crips from Los Angeles, particularly the Roland 40s neighborhood Crips. Seeking validation and recognition, Raymond and his fellow gang members made a journey to Los Angeles, solidifying their bonds with the American counterparts. During their time together, exchanges of information occurred, and strong bonds were forged. Upon their return to the Netherlands, the main triad Crips earned a formidable reputation as the first original Crip set in Europe. The group's evolution didn't stop there, they transformed into the main triad neighborhood Crips, signifying a deeper connection to their local environment. Historically rooted in brotherhood, relatives, and friendship, the Dutch Crips underwent a transformative journey driven by the allure of street life and the pursuit of financial ambitions, evolving from a collective of individuals into formidable criminals, or more fittingly, crazy underground criminals. Thus, this narrative encapsulates the dynamic history of European Crips gangs, highlighting their evolution, international connections, and the fusion of global influences with local roots. Thank you for joining us on this eye-opening journey into the world of Crip gangs in the Netherlands. It's crucial to understand the complex dynamics that shape these youth groups and the impact they have on their communities. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up share it with those interested, and subscribe for more content on social issues and cultural phenomena. Your engagement helps us shed light on the various aspects of our society. Remember, knowledge is a powerful tool for change. Let's continue to explore and discuss these subjects to foster understanding and work towards building safer and stronger communities. Stay informed, stay curious, and until next time, take care.